The James Webb Space Telescope has recently discovered the oldest black hole ever found. It's an ancient monster as massive as 1.6 million suns, and it's lurking 13 billion years in the past at the center of an infant galaxy. This supermassive black hole appeared a mere 440 million years after the beginning of the universe. But it's just one of the countless black holes that inflated to terrifying scales during the dawn of the cosmos. It's the period about 100 million years after the Big Bang. That's when the young universe started to glow for a billion years. This discovery of the universe's oldest black hole can provide astronomers with the answers to some vital questions. For example, how could these space whirlpools balloon in scale so fast after the universe began? Or how did they appear in the first place? You see, black holes in the early universe couldn't grow as quietly and steadily as many modern black holes do. They were bound to experience some peculiar formation and growth. At the same time, closer to the present day, black holes are believed to be born from the collapse of ginormous stars. They grow by munching on gas, dust, stars, and other black holes non-stop. The friction created in the process makes the material, spiraling into a black hole, heat up, and it emits light that can be detected by our telescopes. To spot the oldest black hole, scientists used two infrared cameras, the JWST's mid-infrared instrument and near-infrared camera. They used the camera's built-in spectrographs to break down the light it had been recording into its component frequencies. While examining the results, they discovered unusual spikes among certain frequencies. It could only mean that the hot material around a massive black hole was beaming out faint traces of light. One of the most popular explanations for how ancient black holes grew so rapidly is that they appeared after sudden collapses of colossal gas clouds or they could form as a result of merges between clumps of stars and black holes. There's also a possibility that some of the oldest black holes could have been seeded by hypothetical primordial black holes. Those are believed to have appeared moments after the universe began, but their existence hasn't been proven yet. In any case, this most recent finding of the ancient black hole is extremely important because the formation of galaxies and the appearance of black holes go hand in hand. Every normal-sized galaxy that we know of has a black hole at its center. But even though such black holes are massive and can weigh millions and billions of solar masses, they are still tiny in comparison with their home galaxies. A supermassive black hole usually reaches less than 1% of the mass of a regular-sized galaxy and has a volume that is billions of times smaller. And still, somehow, supermassive black holes can influence galaxies, controlling the formation of stars for billions of years. The thing is, black holes exert an enormous gravitational pull on their surroundings. Any gas, dust, and stars that come too close to a black hole find themselves trapped. A lot of material crams into the space around the black hole and heats up, because that's what materials do when compressed. Soon, everything around the black hole flattens into a thin disk, which is called the accretion disk, and starts swirling around the black hole. Astronomers believe that this process is behind the mysterious relationship between black holes and their host galaxies. It's a connection between the mass of the supermassive black hole and the velocity dispersion of the gas in the galactic core. This cycle also controls the rate of star formation, which is a crucial element of the evolution of galaxies. If this delicately balanced process goes off kilter, the outflows from black holes can get too strong, not only heating the gas in a galaxy, but also removing it altogether. And then, the formation of stars doesn't simply slow down, it stops completely. Major galactic merger events can lead to such dramatic consequences because too much material falls into the central black hole too fast. Somewhere, deep underground in super-secret laboratories, scientists are trying to create a black hole. It looks like the latest experiment was a success. The black hole hovers above the desk for a moment, but then, in a split second, it swallows it whole. Uh-oh. After its meal, the black hole grows until it is out of control. 
Microscopes and test tubes fly into the dark void. Soon everything in the room has been consumed. Each time it eats, it grows bigger and bigger and attracts even larger objects. On the surface, people go about their day as usual. Some joggers stop their run when they see a giant black sphere growing in the distance. Houses are torn from their foundations, and cars fly through the air towards the black abyss. In just a few minutes, the black hole has enveloped our entire planet. Then it grows big enough to consume the Moon and Mars. The black hole is now heavier than anything in our solar system. All of the planets begin to circle it, before becoming food for the monster. Finally, even the sun is extinguished in the belly of the beast. Well, that was pretty bleak. Eh, don't worry. This isn't how the scenario would play out in real life. Our scientists may actually be capable of creating a black hole, but it's far safer than this. The effort to make a black hole is led by the scientists working in Geneva on something called the Large Hadron Collider. This machine basically makes particles move at high speeds until they collide. When this happens, they release a lot of energy and create a lot of interesting effects. Scientists think that energy released by these collisions might be enough to create a black hole. Some people were so worried by this that they even tried to ban the construction of the Large Hadron Collider. Luckily, if a black hole did appear, it would be so small that it wouldn't be able to do anything. Black holes actually produce a lot of energy and release it, often as heat like a furnace. That means that they will fade away when they run out of fuel. If one appeared in the experiment, it would instantly burn out and disappear in a billionth of a second. Even if a stable microscopic black hole was created, it would grow so slowly that nothing would happen. Assuming that it survived long enough to absorb the tiny particles around it, a black hole of this size would take about half a trillion years to gain a pound of weight. Black holes could actually be really useful. One with the mass of Mount Everest would emit enough energy to completely power humanity. Even better, black holes are so dense that the one this big would only take up a tiny bit of space. We couldn't create anything as enormous as the naturally occurring black holes, though. Some can weigh hundreds of thousands of times as much as our sun. Recently, scientists have observed a real black hole feast. The sight of a black hole tearing an enormous star apart is one of the most mesmerizing sights in the universe. Heavier and more destructive than anything else in existence, the black hole is both amazing and terrifying. And black holes aren't actually black at all. They're so massive that even light can't escape their pool, meaning that they're actually invisible. Scientists can only find them with special instruments. Most natural black holes are born as stars reach the end of their lifespan. You can picture healthy stars as giant furnaces that burn hydrogen and give off unbelievable amounts of energy. Every second, stars like our Sun produce more energy than humanity has ever produced, which pushes outwards and makes it want to expand. This is what eventually finds its way to Earth as the heat that birthed life on our planet. The only thing stopping this expansion is gravity, a force that basically just pulls objects toward something heavy. Most people know gravity is something that keeps us planted to the ground and stops us from flying off into space. The force of gravity of a star is so strong on stars that it makes them want to implode in on themselves. So, when a star is healthy, the force of gravity pushes inwards, and the energy it releases tries to inflate it like a balloon. These forces mostly cancel each other out and stop it from doing much at all. When a star burns through its fuel, though, nothing is pushing outwards to stop it from collapsing in on itself. Some really big stars make so much energy that they gradually expand into something called a red giant. When they run out of fuel, they cool, and gravity pushes the enormous object into a tiny space. Scientists use our sun to measure how big things in space are. Our sun weighs one solar mass. If a light star like our sun implodes, not much happens, which is lucky if you've ever worried about being swallowed up into a black hole. If a red giant around 10 solar masses implodes, though, some incredible things can happen. 
The collapse of one of these is so intense that it explodes into a supernova, releasing a light as bright as the entire galaxy. Stars that are massive enough to produce supernovas sometimes become black holes. Their weight causes gravity to push down and compact them until they collapse into a black hole in less than a second. The inside of a black hole is mysterious and unexplored, for obvious reasons. One thing we do know is that they're so massive that they can even distort time. One second near the black disk can be equal to weeks or even months on Earth, depending on its size. In 2019, scientists watched a black hole devour a star the size of our sun. Even though it was 860,000 miles wide, the star was completely trapped in the black hole's gravitational field. For a while, they danced around each other, gradually coming closer and closer. Eventually, though, the star was extinguished in the invisible mouth of the black hole. The black hole sometimes releases beams of energy into space. Sizzling plasma flies out at 6,200 miles per second as the black hole finishes destroying the star. About half of the star's mass is consumed, while the rest is ejected into space. Incredibly, these insatiable titans even consume other black holes when they get big enough. The collision of two black holes was recently witnessed by scientists when one, weighing in at 85 solar masses, met another that was 66 solar masses. When black holes interact, the bigger one always swallows the smaller, adding even more mass to itself. The resulting black hole here reached 142 solar masses big. It's hard to believe, but this is still very small for a black hole. It will continue to consume everything around it and might even reach the size of a supermassive black hole at some point. These are unbelievably big and destructive. Our entire galaxy, the Milky Way, rotates around the gravitational field of one of these supermassive black holes. This monster weighs around 4 million solar masses or more than a trillion times our planet. And that isn't even the biggest they get. It's also theorized that black holes can be made without a dramatic explosion. Big gas clouds that weigh hundreds of thousands of solar masses could condense under the force of their gravity to make a star. This object would already be so heavy that it would continue to compact until it became a black hole, skipping the supernova stage. Supermassive black holes are so far away and hard to observe the scientist doesn't have a full understanding of them yet. We don't know much about what happens inside a black hole, leading to a lot of speculation. For decades, people have theorized about how we could use black holes. Knowing that black holes distort time means that someone could use it to travel to the future with the right technology. If it was possible to build a ship strong enough to withstand the powerful gravitational fields, it would be simple. All they would need to do is decide how far they want to go and fly around the outside of the black hole. In the few minutes or hours they spent near the time warp, years could have passed back on Earth. They could be thousands of years old without having aged at all physically. Wow, that's officially a mind blower. Black holes are like omnivores. They'll eat anything in their way if it gets close enough, including planets, stars, clouds of gas, or some very unfortunate intergalactic travelers. Not that it really gets hungry and goes after space objects. It simply swallows whatever comes nearby. It stretches giant space bodies until they're thin like spaghetti and rips them apart atom by atom. A black hole is a huge amount of matter that comes in a very small package. It's like you squeeze a star ten times bigger and more massive than the sun into a small area with the diameter of New York City. You get an extremely massive, compact, and dense pit with gravity so strong, not even light can escape. Not even another black hole. They don't have a fixed point in space. Stars, planets, asteroids, comets, black holes, and everything in the universe is in constant motion. That's why things get so chaotic from time to time. 
researchers found a giant black hole at the heart of one galaxy being eaten by an even bigger one. A black hole can get extremely big. At the centers of most giant galaxies are black holes that can grow millions to billions of times the mass of our sun. One of the ways to become so big is by eating others of its kind. A black hole merging with another black hole is one of the most energetic and powerful things in the universe. Picture this. 1.3 billion years ago, two black holes are circling around each other. The bigger one pulls the smaller black hole inwards, and now they're locked together in a spiral. Through time, that orbit starts decaying, but very, very slowly. These two black holes are constantly getting closer and closer. As they approach one another, the disks of orbiting dust and gases that surround them mix and create an intense towering vortex. It extends and goes pretty high above the center of that disk. At some point, they finally merge into one extra big, supermassive black hole. As they're merging, they kick out gravitational waves. These waves tell us a lot about black holes, but they can't reveal their precise position. So, scientists need some electromagnetic signal that will find the black hole's location, like radio waves, X-rays, or a flash of light. We can't see black holes, but we can detect their effect on space objects that are surrounding them. When a black hole passes through a cloud of matter, its strong gravity will pull matter inward. If a star or a planet comes close enough, the same will happen. The attracted matter then accelerates, which means starts to move very quickly and heats up. The black hole then starts emitting X-rays that radiate in the area surrounding it. The energy of X-rays affects the neighborhood and can, for example, spur the growth of new stars. And finally, BAM! They collide! It's a massive burst of energy, one of the biggest bangs ever since the Big Bang. In less than a second, that collision emitted more energy than all of the stars in the visible universe together at the same time. Black holes can become huge, but not necessarily. Stellar mass black holes have a mass similar to the Sun, and they can be very small. The one scientists found in 2019 is located 10,000 light years away from us and is only 12 miles across. They really have a reputation for destruction, but black holes are just another source of gravitational force, similar to stars. That means it's possible for a space body to orbit them, if it moves fast enough, of course. Let's say there's a black hole with the same mass as the sun. The speed a space body would have to move at is the same as the one needed to orbit our sun, if the distance is the same. That's a theory. In reality, planets don't really orbit black holes because those that have a mass similar to our parent star are mostly the remnants of giant stars that ran out of nuclear fuel and eventually exploded. That's how black holes are created in the first place. And chances are that none of those planets nearby will survive it. But 30 years ago, scientists discovered the first planets beyond our solar system. These planets were found orbiting a pulsar, which is also some sort of supernova remnant. We don't know how they survived the explosion of their parent star. It's possible they may have been created after the destruction from debris that formed after the explosion. Scientists even have a theory that black holes are possibly wormholes, something like tunnels to other galaxies. That means they don't destroy objects they swallow, but send them somewhere. The theory says the object that enters and then goes out on the other side leaves the tunnel through something opposite of the black hole, a white hole. It probably looks similar to its companion, with all that spinning and similar mass. There could be a ring of gas and dust around the event horizon. The event horizon is the point of no return, the part of a black hole where nothing escapes. Unlike a black hole, a white hole lets light and all the matter leave but none of that will be able to enter the portal once again. About 50 years ago, Stephen Hawking realized that black holes leak energy. Scientists then developed the theory that a white hole could be born out of a black hole. They're still not sure how the black hole disappears, but in this scenario, it would grow so small, it no longer can have such strong gravity that makes it swallow other objects. So, it might turn into a white hole then.
Such a hole would be similar in mass to something really light, like human hair. It wouldn't be so dramatic as its black hole ancestor, but it would still hide mysteries in its interior, the information of all space objects it had swallowed previously. It would eventually spit out that information and get so big, it would dominate the universe. White hole behavior, opposite of black holes and all that sucking the matter inward, could be compared to the Big Bang explosion, where the universe is expanding and new objects are forming. But even if something like this happens, it may only be possible trillions of years from now. And there's an issue. Even if some big white holes did form somewhere in space, they probably wouldn't last too long. Outgoing objects would collide with the matter in orbit, so the whole system would collapse and turn into a black hole once again, since they're also formed after supernova explosions. Stars, asteroids, comets, galaxies, and planets, all those space things we can see, make up nearly 5% of the universe. About 25% could be dark matter, a mysterious substance we can't actually see, but assume it's there because everything in the universe moves to its gravitational tune. This dark matter is kind of like a spider's web. It holds all those galaxies that move pretty fast together. Its evil twin is called antimatter. Antimatter particles are like the opposite version of the matter, the same mass but opposite electric charge. When they collide, antimatter wipes out the regular matter, and the result is pure energy. Dark matter probably makes the universe expand even faster than it used to do. One of the latest theories says it could be responsible for the huge asteroid strike that made the dinosaurs go extinct, too. The universe doesn't have a center, but galaxies do. The Earth makes a circle around the center of the Milky Way once every 250 million years. This orbit is not straightforward, but we can roughly predict it. Once in every 60 million years, we go through the crowded region of our galaxy, known as the galactic disk. At the same time, we can track some harsh mass extinctions in the history of our planet, including the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs about 66 million years ago. Professor Rampino from New York University proposes that dark matter has a gravity that could throw nearby space bodies into the Earth's path whenever we enter the galactic disk. That means some asteroids and comets that would usually be far away from us are flung towards our planet. The biggest thing in the universe, at least the one we know about, is the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall. It's a cluster of galaxies 10 billion light years across, bound together by gravitational force. The biggest elliptical galaxy is IC1101 and has a diameter of 4 million light years. The smallest galaxy, Segway 2, we've discovered so far, has a diameter of a little bit over 220 light years. It's pretty faint and has only 1,000 stars. For comparison, our galaxy has 100,000 million stars. It orbits the Milky Way. Black holes are terrifyingly dense space objects, pulling inside everything that comes too close. Nothing can escape their clutches, even a beam of light. At the same time, black holes are some of the most mysterious objects in the universe. According to their mass, black holes are usually divided into three categories. Stellar black holes have a mass from a few to hundreds of times the mass of the Sun. Intermediate black holes should range from 100 to hundreds of thousands of times the Sun's mass. Scientists are now actively hunting these missing link black mysteries. But the real behemoths of the cosmos are supermassive black holes. They have hundreds of thousands to billions of times the mass of our Sun. Most supermassive black holes lie in the centers of their home galaxies. You can probably say that they sit in the gravitational driving seat. Meanwhile, hundreds of billions of stars, planets, and moons orbit them. Let's have a look at the biggest black holes astronomers have found so far. NGC 6166 is a monster that has grown to have a mass of 30 billion solar masses. It's actually an elliptical galaxy that has an active nucleus in the center. It's also one of the most luminous sources of X-rays. The galaxy's supermassive black hole powers two symmetric radio jets in the opposite direction. 
which is the result of the infall of gas into its center. Another peculiar thing about NGC 6166 is that it shows a blue shift, which means it's moving toward us. The next supermassive black hole is located in the constellation of Draco, approximately 10.4 gigalight years from us. The mass of this supergiant is more than 30 billion solar masses. Besides being incredibly massive, the black hole is also really big. If it replaced our sun, the diameter of this hole would extend to the orbit of Pluto. This S5 Theora 1481 is one of the most interesting black holes on our list. It has a mass of 40 billion solar masses and is actually a blazer, the most energetic of all quasars, which are super bright distant objects. The blazar's luminosity is 300 trillion times that of the sun and more than 25,000 times as great as the luminosity of all 100 to 400 billion stars of the Milky Way galaxy combined. But since the distance to this quasar is about 12.1 billion light years, we can't see it directly. But we know that the central black hole of the quasar consumes huge amounts of matter, about 4,000 solar masses of material every year. By C1101 is a supergiant elliptical galaxy. It's the most massive known galaxy so far. Since this galaxy is elliptical, it isn't filled with gas. That's why the star formation in that region is very low. As for the black hole at the center of IC 1101, it has a mass of 40 to 100 billion solar masses and emits clear radio signals. Recently, astronomers have discovered a gravitational space wonder that has swollen to really unimaginable proportions. The black hole I'm talking about is Ton 618, and it's a mind-boggling 66 billion solar masses. The thing is so massive that astronomers had to think of a new term to describe it. They came up with an ultramassive black hole. Imagine gathering all the stars in our home Milky Way galaxy and squishing the matter they're made of into one black hole. And it still won't be enough to create a ton 618. If this monster of a black hole replaced the sun, its radius would be more than 40 times the size of Neptune's orbit. You probably know that black holes are made of matter packed together as densely as possible. And still, it doesn't mean that black holes are some kind of space predator, roaming galaxies and munching on everything they come across. Ton 618 still has a whole galaxy filled with stars and other stuff happily orbiting it without getting pulled inside. What I want to say is that the perception of black holes as giant vacuum cleaners is wrong. In reality, it's incredibly hard to grow a black hole Try to do it and you'll see. Black holes are some of the most mysterious phenomena in the universe, but still the bright minds of mankind manage to study these strange objects. And thanks to them, that knowledge is spreading. Let's check what we have learned with this quiz on black holes. 1. Quasars are distant galaxies whose central regions are thought to contain a supermassive black hole, a supermassive and active black hole, an active black hole. Two. The black hole at the center of our galaxy is called Alpha Centauri, Sagittarius A, ton 618. The largest known black hole, ton 618, Gargantua, Sagittarius A. The black hole has a mass of 66 billion solar masses. We purposely did not specify the Phoenix A option as the research is not yet reliable. Four. The point at the center of a black hole is called Entropy, Singularity, Centrality. Five. A formula for measuring the gravitational radius of a black hole. One, two, three.
Okay, okay, I was just kidding. Six. The Chandra Sekhar limit is the minimum density of a black hole, the maximum mass of a black hole, the maximum mass of a stable white dwarf star. Seven. What is Hawking radiation? Evaporation of small black holes, turning a star into a black hole. Radiation emission by black holes. Eight. General relativity predicts that black holes have infinite density, infinite mass, infinite volume. Stars become black holes if their mass is half the mass of the sun, three times the mass of the sun, ten times the mass of the sun. Ten. The first image of a black hole shadow is obtained from a galaxy, Milky Way, M87, Andromeda. On April 10th, 2019, the first image of a black hole inside Messier Galaxy 87 was published. On May 12th, 2022, a second image of a black hole was published, Sagittarius A. What is an event horizon? The boundary beyond which events cannot affect the observer. The boundary between the Earth's atmosphere and space. State border. How many questions did you answer correctly? As usual, write in the comments. Perhaps you were even able to specify the formula correctly. Thanks for watching and subscribe to the channel.